I want to talk today about something simply incredible. I want to read to you from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, some verses where a miracle had taken place. In fact, it was an incredible miracle. Here's what the Word says. One day as he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law, who had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem, were sitting there. And the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralytic on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. And when they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles in the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? And Jesus knew what they were thinking, and he asked, why are you thinking these things in your heart? Which is easier, to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. And immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been laying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and praised God. They were filled with awe and said, We have seen remarkable things today. We have seen remarkable things today. Let me ask the question, when is the last time we experienced God doing something wonderful, something strange and incredible, something from the human perspective was almost unthinkable? The onlookers after the healing said, we have seen remarkable things today. We've talked about faith many times in our churches. I go back to after Jesus had calmed the storm and the disciple says, what kind of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey him? Something incredible happens when Jesus gets involved in the equation. We have often prayed the Christian church for the evidence of the supernatural God. In this past year, we've been particularly praying against the COVID. We have prayed for revival and healing and restoration in the church. We have been praying that God's church, as the Bible says, will be without spot and wrinkle. But when is the last time we have seen the incredible supernatural power of God working within us individually, working within our local churches, or across this great country of ours. We're going to experience something that is absolutely incredible in the story that I just read. It is beyond almost human comprehension. We're going to look in on an incredible miracle that took place in a typical home at that particular time. The house was nothing fancy, but it was comfortable and offered the family a place to live. Again, the magnetic personality of Jesus drew people to his ministry, to his teachings, and to his healing. The Bible says that the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, they came from all over the villages that were near. And, and their intentions, they were not necessarily to gain truth 
or insight into spiritual things, but to question Jesus and to find fault with him. In fact, one translation says that they were simply sitting nearby, waiting for the opportunity to question Jesus. Well, a battle is about to develop. And while Jesus continues his teaching, nobody has any idea of what's going to take place next. And the Bible says, and I read it earlier, and the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. And this paralytic was not even brought into the presence of Jesus yet. And the Bible amazingly says that the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. He was always ready to do the incredible, the miraculous, and the supernatural. It is interesting that the Holy Spirit at Luke pin words that prepares us for a battle between right and wrong, between law and grace, between Christ and Satan. The power of God was upon his son before the sick were even presented to him. And his teaching was continuing in the midst of this. And the Bible says, that they came to get him into the house. And the translation says they tried to push through the crowd. There was no way that they could get inside that house and bring their friend for healing. There was a pushing and there was a shoving. There, there was a, 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 a hassle and a hustle to get into that home. Maybe there was competitive forcefulness. But this paralytic must get into the very presence of Jesus Christ. You see, they came a long way, and they were not about to lose the battle. They wanted to experience an incredible miracle. And so the Bible says of Jesus earlier, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open. For everyone who asks receives. Praise the Lord. He who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be open. They are so incredibly close to a supernatural miracle that they're going to experience because Jesus is about to get involved in a miracle. It's absolutely crazy what they do. They didn't even consult the insurance company, but they decided to get up on the roof of that house and try to bring their friend down through the shingles. The faithful few were about to do something that you and I would think would be totally and absolutely ludicrous. You see, their faith the faith of the friends of the paralytic, their faith was a lightning rod. And so taking a part of the roof and lowering the man down to the very presence of Jesus would certainly capture the attention of not only Jesus, but the Pharisees and the scribes and the onlookers. And the amazing thing is there was no conversation up to this point and the Bible says that Jesus saw their faith. You see, he saw faith demonstrated in a way that would bring a reward. And right in front of him is a man who seemingly fell from the sky and, and was astounded by what must have been a demonstration of faith by the faithful few. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said, I quote, Friend, your sins are forgiven. They didn't ask for healing. They didn't ask for the forgiveness of sin. The fact that the man lay there on a mat told the heart of Jesus that this is a man in need. And he forgave him of his sin immediately. And when Jesus spoke, the Bible says, and I quote, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? And Jesus is God. And Jesus has the capacity and even the audacity to forgive and to heal people. You see, the theology of the Pharisees was that if a person is sick, then that person is sick 
as a result of sin. And as long as that person is in sin, then healing cannot happen. Why, even the disciples of Jesus noted this strange doctrine. And, and when they saw a blind man from birth, they asked of Jesus, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? It was instilled into their heart that sin and sickness rode on the same bicycle. And Jesus forgave the man of his sin because he had the ability to forgive this man of his sin. He healed him of paralysis and the man was ordered to get up, take your mat and go home. Incredible? Absolutely. Supernatural? Totally. Beyond our comprehension? You bet your bottom dollar. But yet it was an opportunity for God through Jesus Christ to demonstrate supernatural abilities out of a sense of love. Jesus had nothing to prove. This was not political. There was no way Jesus had the intentions of healing this man just so that Christ's popularity could continue to soar. Jesus came to heal. Amen. Jesus came to forgive. Hallelujah. Jesus came to bring life to the down and the out. And incredibly, on that particular day, a miracle of great magnitude had taken place. What an incredible experience. I would even imagine, I would think in my heart, in my limited human understanding, that even the friends who lowered Jesus or lowered the man down through the roof to Jesus, they themselves must have been incredibly impressed by what they had just experienced. Their faith had been rewarded. And the Bible says of the miracle, everyone was amazed and they gave praise to God. The Bible says they were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. Back to the beginning of my little presentation. When is the last time we have seen something supernatural, something totally incredible that only God can do? You know, the most incredible thing that God can do today is to bring life into your heart. John 10 and 10, Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Ladies and gentlemen, what's your need today? Is your need to have a personal relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ? Then come and act by faith. Do you have a need of healing? Are, are you going through difficult times? Do you have to make difficult decisions? Is this COVID thing just draining you of life? Somebody mentioned the other day that in the last two years or the last year, we have been so busy thinking about dying that we have forgotten how to live. I want to pray today in the name of Jesus that he will meet your every need and let the blessings of God fill you today in Christ's name. Amen. Have an awesome day. Blessings to you.